Hey everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video, I'll be starting a brand new series that I hope you guys are all gonna love. So back years ago when I first started reading the series, long before it was actually finished, there were a number of fan sites for the Wheel of Time. This was before YouTube and one of the things that most of us fans did was hop on sites like Theoryland or Wattmania before it was absorbed into Dragonmount. The message boards on those sites were full of fan theories, some of which were proved correct as the novels were finished and some that were proven incorrect and some that we never really got answers to. In this series I'll be diving into some of the more popular fan theories that still don't have conclusive answers and explaining the theory, what evidence there is to support it, why the theory might not be true, and then ultimately I'll give my opinion on that theory and whether or not I think it's plausible. Then I want you all to chime in in the comments and let me know what you think. Hopefully we'll get a debate started here. Before we get into the meat of the video, I wanna give a big thank you over to the folks at audible.com. They've been a major supporter of my channel and they're offering a very special gift to my viewers. You can receive a free audiobook of your choice from their list of thousands of titles without any commitment and support the channel at the same time. I'm a huge fan of Audible and I not only own all of the Wheel of Time books on Audible, but I also have a bunch of other fantasy titles, self-development books for my business, and other pleasure reading books. If you don't already have the Wheel of Time audiobooks, I highly recommend grabbing them on Audible and giving them a listen. It's a good time for a reread anyway because the TV series is coming up and you will absolutely love the experience if you haven't done it on audiobook before. All you have to do is go to www www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nabless and sign up for a one month free trial. You'll get your audiobook and then you can decide if you want to keep the service or not. But whether you decide to keep it or not, you still get to keep the audiobook. For each of you that does that, you help out the channel greatly. So let's go ahead and get into the video. We'll start by throwing up a spoiler warning. Today's video will have a spoiler rating of red, meaning there will be major spoilers for the entire series. If you haven't finished all the way through A Memory of Light, you will likely have things spoiled for you. Watch at your own risk. So the first theory we'll be taking a look at in this series is one of the more popular theories from a user named Uno, originally posted on Theoryland. The theory argues that the dragon, being bound to the wheel, is reborn at times not as the dragon reborn, but at a time when the dragon is not needed. When this happens, the pattern corrects itself by using other souls bound to the wheel to defeat the dragon as it isn't the right time for the dragon's rise. According to the theory, we see this take place in the person of Guerra Malison as the incarnation of the same soul that inhabits Luz Theron Telamon and Randall Thor. And that because Amalison did not fulfill the prophecies, the pattern spun out Arter Hawkwing to defeat him. So that's a lot. We're going to dive into all of the pieces of it, the arguments for and against, but let's start by breaking down who these people are. Guerra Malison was born in Dharmavan, a country that covered the nations of Eridamon, Terabon, and Almuth plane in the timeline of the main novels. He was born sometime between 910 of the Free Years and 920 of the Free Years, and he was a dynamic leader and began to channel around the ages of 19 or 20. He was highly educated and was described as having deep-set eyes and a mesmeric gaze. He declared himself the dragon reborn in 939 of the Free Years, and he developed quite a following and named his followers the Children of the Dragon. And within half a year, he had conquered not only Dharmavan, but also a bunch of other nations, including Balasan and Ellen de Poor. In the spring of 940 of the Free Years, Arthur Hawkwing, the ruler of the small nation of Shandale, sent an army against Amalasan, and over the next year, so did all of the other nations of the Westlands, starting the War of the Second Dragon. By 943 of the Free Years, Amalasan's power had grown immense. He had conquered almost half the nations of the Westlands. He had amassed a force of 26,000 strong cavalry and 140,000 strong strong infantry. Amalasan laid siege to the city of Farmatting, conquering it within weeks, and he had even laid siege to the Stone of Tyr. He would likely have taken the stone if there hadn't been a force of 30 Aes Sedai that had taken refuge in the stone and helped defend it. Amalasan was leading an attack on the nation of Tova, and Hawking met him in battle, and although Hawkwing was outnumbered, Hawkwing won the battle and Amalasan was taken captive and brought to Tarval and to be gentled and executed. Six Aes Sedai initially tried to take Amalasan, but he was such a powerful channeler 
that he killed one of them and still two others in the attempt. He was eventually taken, however, but his followers did not give up, leading an assault on Tarvalon itself, and they almost rescued him, making it all the way to the tower before being turned back. He was gentled and executed by the Aes Sedai after being tried and convicted. Now, Arthur Hawkwing was born in 912 of the Free Years in the nation of Shandale. He becomes king in 937 of the Free Years after both his parents are killed in a black fever epidemic. When Amalasan begins his campaign to conquer the Westlands, Hawkwing opposes him and meets him in battle many times, ultimately defeating Amalasan's forces. He takes Amalasan to Tarvalon, and when Amalasan's forces try to rescue him, Hawkwing leads his own forces into the city to defend Tarvalon. This angers the Amerlin at the time, Bonwin, because he entered the city without permission, and she encourages other nations to attack Hawkwing's nation of Shandale, and thus begins Hawkwing's own conquest of the Westlands and eventual unification of the continent. I won't go too far in depth on that right now because it's not relevant to this theory, but needless to say, Hawkwing was a very powerful Taviran and an outstanding general. Now, Randall Thor is the Dragon Reborn and the main protagonist of the story. I'm not going to get into his history here, as if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you know who Rand is. So let's dive into the arguments behind why this theory might make sense. So the basis of the theory really starts around the end of the Great Hunt, when Arthur Hawkwing, called back by the Horn of Valir, says to Rand, and again referring to him as Luz Theron, I have fought by your side times beyond number, Luz Theron, and faced you as many more. The wheel spins us out for its purposes, not ours, to serve the pattern. I know you if you do not know yourself. The implication that Arthur Hawkwing has faced the dragon reborn in battles implies a time when they are both spun out by the wheel and they're in conflict with one another. This leads to Gwera Malasan, according to the theory, for a number of reasons. First of all, Amalasan and Randal Thor have many similarities. Their ages are very similar when they proclaim themselves the Dragon Reborn. Amalasan also proclaims himself Dragon Reborn in the exact same place that Rand did in the Great Hunt, on the peninsula at Falma. Gwer used the Banner of Light as his symbol, just as Rand did, and there's a strong possibility that Amalasan was a Taviran as well, and certainly he was a very strong channeler. The second argument is that the soul of Luz Theron, when spun into the pattern, will always attempt to become the dragon. But when it's not time for the dragon to act, as it was in the time of Amalasan, the pattern will also spin out a foil for the dragon to stop him. In this case, the theory states that that was Arthur Hawkwing, one of the most powerful Taviran of all time, and one of the greatest generals and conquerors of all time. The theory argues later, Luz Theron, while muttering in Rand's head in the Winter's Heart prologue, says, I thought I could build. I was wrong. We are not builders. Not you, or I, or the other one. We are destroyers. Later in Winter's Heart, Luz Theron says again in his head, You destroyed them already. Now you have someone else to destroy, but not before time. How many will we three kill before the end, I wonder? Both statements imply there's a third incarnation of their soul, one that is not vocal in Rand's head. In finality, the theory states that just as Rand Althor is the rebirth of Luz Theron Telamon's soul, so was Guerra Malasan, just at the wrong time. So the pattern spun out Hawkwing to defeat him and prevent him from fulfilling the prophecies of the dragon before he was needed. So, are there any holes in this theory? I think there are a couple. The first one I noticed is that it seems odd that the pattern would spin out the dragon at a time when he wasn't needed. Amalasan was more than a thousand years before the pattern really needed the dragon reborn, so it doesn't make sense that he would be spun out then. But the counter-argument to that statement is that Amalasan's appearance sparked Hawkwing's campaign and success in uniting the Westlands. Without that, he wouldn't have sent the armies to Shanchan, and the Shanchan and wouldn't have returned for the last battle. So all of this could have been the plan of the pattern. Robert Jordan has been quoted as saying that the dragon can be spun out into the pattern at times that he isn't needed to be the dragon reborn. Another argument against this theory is that the third voice or the person that Luz Theron is referring to is more than likely Moradin. Luz Theron only starts mentioning the third person after Rand and Moradin cross streams of Balefire. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams and start seeing through each other's eyes. This is the beginning of Rand's channeling sickness as well. The counter-argument to that is that Luz Theron would not have casually spoken of Moradin or Ishamael this way. He seemed more intimately familiar with the person, and it seemed like that third person he was referring to was one of them. So what do I think of the theory? Well, I actually think it's kind of plausible. I think it holds up fairly well to scrutiny from what we do know and from what we know from Robert Jordan's interviews. And while we may never know for sure, I think that it makes sense from the standpoints of following the rules set for in the novels, and the coincidences just line up to make it plausible. So my final judgment? Plausible. So what do you think of the theory? 
Is Guerra Malasan just lose Theron's soul reborn? Just not at a time when he needed to be the dragon? Let me know what you think of the theory in the comments below, and if you have any evidence to add for or against let me know there as well. I'd love to get a good discussion going in the comments. If you like discussion like this, make sure to also check out my Patreon where you can learn how to support the channel and you can find the free link to access my Discord server where we talk quite often about theories, the series in general, and the upcoming television show. I'd love to have you all a part of that community because we really get to interact and it's a lot of fun. You can find the link to the Patreon in the description below. Also, if you like the video, be sure to hit the like button and punch that subscribe button as well to be updated when I put out new content. You can hit the bell icon next to it so you can get the notifications. Hey guys, thanks everybody, and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. My mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free, crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?